Good afternoon from Sacred Space at Titania's Realm. It's the 9th of June 2024 and the time is 2.42pm and it's Sunday. Sunday, Charlie, Sunday. Charlie's been plucking out feathers. That was yesterday's feather and that was yesterday's feather. Can you stop doing that, Charlie? Because you're going bald. My bird has tricholotomania, which is weird because my grandfather suffered with that and my younger daughter, Jasmine, rather enjoys it too. That means the urge to pull out your eyelashes and your eyebrows and rip out your hair. It's a very bad habit, very, very bad habit, but it's kind of a nervous habit. And um, I was astonished when Jasmine started doing it because my, my father used to tell me how my grandfather had no eyebrows or eyelashes because he was plucking them out, which, you know, didn't impact on my life because I didn't see much of my grandfather growing up. But then my daughter started doing it and she was bordering a bit on an eating disorder as well. So um, insanity runs in my family on both sides of the um, family tree and... Um, Tricholotomania is a thing. But but Charlie's never met Jasmine, because Jasmine's been estranged from me for many, many years now. And Charlie somehow caught the family dynamic. Nah, no, she came to me with this habit of plucking out her feathers. So birdie, birdie tricholotomania, they say, is um, caused by the birds being stressed and not getting enough attention. Hello. But apart from me being out this morning because I went and had lunch with my friends um, Robin and Peter and then helped um, unpack and you know, un empty out the house of the last of the stuff to be taken to their their, their home, the, out of their mother's house, which I volunteered to help. They never asked for help, but I, I insisted because, you know, it's what you do. And they, I could see they needed the help even though they wouldn't ask for it because they're too proud. So anyway, I've spent the, um, most of the afternoon there. So I've been home with Missy, who's very happy to see me. Aren't you? Hello. Hello. Tell the people. So Mama's just got home not that long ago. And um, my friend Peter gave me these two sort of stainless steel um, kind of trays that are perfect for soldering on. So I went straight out and set up the one of one the first one um, on my outside soldering station. And I'll keep the um the second uh, stainless steel shelf thingy um, for using indoors. So I'm really thrilled, really thrilled about it, really happy. So that's what I've been doing, and so as a consequence. I'm late making my vlog today, but never mind. Better late than never. I'm here. Look, another feather. Look, this is getting quite quite worrisome, actually. Um, I'm here strutting my stuff, Charlie. We'll just put that back up there, I think. So, uh, anyway, today's writings. I think it. I'd rather you either sit on my shoulder properly or just sat somewhere else, but not half hanging off one arm, please. Thank you. I know. It's a it's a Charlie thing. So I got lots of kisses and cuddles with little Miss Coco, um, Robin and Pete's little dog. I refer to her as the doggest goddess. So that was lovely too. Um, anyway, today's memories are titled Recalibrations. Uh oh, you know what that means, recalibrations. It's up there when I say I'm under metamorphosis. So anyway, it should be interesting, it should be interesting. And uh, today's photo is of, actually from, huh, from the 7th of February 2011. But I must have felt like posting her up because she is so cute and adorable. She's waiting for me in a Valhalla or wherever good doggies wait for their mummies. But here she is, my little Pomeranian. 
little Bella Rosa Aaron's. Oh, I miss that little face. I miss that little face. And I miss, yes, Bobo. That's not Bobo, that's Bella. But I miss, I miss Bobo too, Charlie. I miss, and all the pussycats. I miss them all, Charlie. Right, here we go. Ninth, ninth of June. Charlie, Charlie, you have to be quiet now. Please, can you be quiet? Can you go, can you go, shh, shh. Shh, hush. She's not gonna be quiet. My daughter, <clears throat> my daughter is adamant she doesn't want me to come to her show. But she threw in my face in no particular order my ex-husband and his girlfriend, then Jared, then told me to get therapy. Ha, ha, ha. Projection much. Really fucking insulting given I've been in therapy now for 25 years. So she's got a fucking chutzpah to even speak to me like that. But anyway, I was trying to soldier through and be be the mother and be the bigger person till in the end it got too much. The toxicity reminds me I really should sell the Ladro and everything I own and just leave this country. It's a constant seeping wound with my family of origin. Mind you, my two daughters are the last of that family of origin. That can be quite vicious. Oh, well, she is determined to make a success of herself. And frankly, it's about bloody time. Pity she had to crush the one woman who actually supported her in her career choice since childhood. But then she never, ever supported me in my career choices either. Oh, well, dead shits happen. I am done. My friend Jan wrote, I'm sorry you're going through this. And I replied, thanks, Jan. Kiss, kiss, kiss. It's a repeat cycle. Nothing new under the sun. So frankly, I'm rather sick of this. All good. I will surround myself with good, kind, loving people or stay alone according to my whims on any given day and or moment. Charlie's doing really weird things. Don't you put holes in that little crochet doily because Uncle Jared made that for me. Don't destroy my, lo my lovely things. Mama T and Charlie are grounding in this on this beautiful midday-ish. That can't be right. I wrote 10.35 p.m. afternoon. I'm sure that's an extra two. It's probably meant to say 2.35 p.m. Afternoon. She climbed up on my shoulder and is soaking up the attention. Sweet girl. She gets plenty of attention, and yet she still plucks her bloody feathers. The mad, the mad little varmint bird. What are you doing, varmint bird? Being a varmint. No, don't, don't look that. Look, just, just getting on my nerves. I'm going to have to put her back in her cage in a minute. It makes sense to her, you know, to her little bird brain, doesn't it? 2nd of June 2019. Three years since the dead ex-lover, homeopath, psychopath, haunted my front door for four consecutive nights. He even managed to disturb Beauregard. Freaked my dog out big time. Clearly the dog, but my dog could actually see him because... They're more clairvoyant than we humans. But anyway, that would have been a horror. 
because Beauregard had no idea who that man was. You know, he'd been out of my life for 15, 16 years when he upped and died. Bobo never had the displeasure of meeting him. Anyway, it must have been frightening for my little dog. It certainly freaked me out. How is life for me now? Ha ha, still single, free, contemplating my weird, fucked up, but nevertheless powerfully awesome life. Indeed. Still loving the last fool that tried to drag me into the abyss. That was in 2019. Eventually got over that. Thank you, Papa Legba, the guardian of the crossroads. Had to invoke him to help me get over it. It wasn't healthy. Running into him even on the streets of Brisbane, by the way. Completely bizarre. Oh, well, hopefully when he drops dead, he doesn't try hammering down my door as well. Oh, I'll, I'll go berserk if that happens again. Anyway. But really, I am regaining my former glory that was smothered and stymied by dickheads. Amen, sister. Early Saturday morning, a former friend turned traitor. Oh, those creeps, I remember that now. Sat outside the kebab shop and watched me chat happily to my homeless friend. I had felt her eyes burning into my back and turned around. Gave her my blank stare, resting witch face. Then resumed chatting to my friend. We mused over our many happy memories of our camaraderie in the night while some drunk woman kept gifting her and her sleeping male friend bananas. Even trying to wake up the sleeper. Oh my then she went back in the shop and bought more bananas and kept trying to gift them. It was a bit bizarre. I joked, oh look Katrina, this lady thinks you need more potassium. We laughed. Drunk people in alcoholic blackout nurturing homeless people with bananas. Like a zoo. I said, oh well, she means well, I guess. Wants to mother you? Bananas. She would have been better off giving them the money she spent on the bananas so they could buy an actual proper meal. Am I right? It's just bonkers. Bananas in a 7-Eleven wouldn't be cheap either. Anyway. I watched as the former friend, my former friend, staggered up the road, her toxic loneliness leeching out of her. Yup, karma. It's not actually clear there, but the ex-friend wasn't the same person that was buying bananas for my homeless friends. It was a different woman doing that. It was bizarre though. <laughs> yup, karma. When you shit on good women, you will learn to live in shit of your own making, babies. Like the unmetamorphosed cockroach, you truly are. She who looked down on me and my beautiful home and garden, then fucked my former lover, then slandered me. Narcissist psychopath. Let shits go. Show no mercy. Never give them another chance. Let them gaze at my back or my front. Never will they bask in my personal manifested sunshine again. No respect. No decency. And no gratitude. They try to utterly destroy me. I won. Let's dance. Rejoice in the summer lands. Wild and free and joyous. Mm-hmm.
I'm too low in the screen, I don't like it. I want it to sit us up at a better angle than that. Not happy, Jan. Mama T's not happy. That's better. My eyes should be one third down. Perfect. <clears throat> Here I write catharsis, necrosis, extrusion, confusion, fusion, ablutions, purging pain and pent up bile, belching, oh, sorry, belching, refluxive, gaseous exchanges, smiling into the sunshine, hooray! And up she rises. Something wonderful is brewing. I can sense it. But what? Kelsa, please feel it on the breezes. Magic in the air. A new brush to sweep out the old and dysfunctional and herald the new. Ninth of June, 2018. I wish to God I had found a lover who genuinely loved me just once in my life. Oh, Not just to fuck and run, but to hold me physically and metaphorically. I have had to be strong and alone too long. I have had to watch my life float away in false hope with false lovers. I even had to kill myself <laughs> and failed even at that. I keep giving love and life yet another chance. Instead, I am deluded and cheated out of what other ordinary humans enjoy every day true love and devotion. So here I sit in perpetual motion, bleeding out my emotions, waiting for another miracle. Absurd, absurd and bizarre, waiting for the punchline. I am good at turning my tragic, nonsensical, berserker life into anything but bland comedic misadventures. But not this time. One too many fucks given. Ah, there it is. Humour in the fucking void of all avoidance. I wish I could have made it in this life. Been safe and serene and cherished. Success is a simple desire for a complex PTSD survivor and or warrior goddess. Enough food, enough shelter, enough good people to hold us above the turgid dirty river of death. Enough joy, enough love. Just another day in paradise, face first in the muck, head down, ass up, valuable, if only to myself. I picked up the three corsets I had dry cleaned, not a hundred percent happy with the results given how much they charged for each one. Still, I can get dressed up and clean corsets for my next night out. 9th of June 2016 I posted an article from Sunrise Would you support a loved one being euthanised? A report being put forth to Parliament recommends allowing assisted deaths for patients with no chance of recovery If the law is passed Victoria will be the only state in Australia to legalise euthanasia thoughts and um, I was pro I, and I am 
technically pro-euthanasia, but that was before COVID came along and they were killing people with midazolam and barbiturates just, just to exp expedite culling the population, basically, putting people on ventilators that were killing them too. So um, I'm against government-sponsored euthanasia, but pro-euthanasia that's voluntary and asked for by the dying patient who still has enough cognition to decide if they want to suffer one moment longer or not. I do believe people have the right to die with dignity and have a say in it. Um, I don't believe that hospital staff should be allowed to just randomly change people's charts to do not resuscitate just because it's a convenience for them. It's evil what absolutely went on in the last four years. Pure, unadulterated evil. So, um, euthanasia should be a basic human right, but for the individual to choose not to be um, expediently um, sent to the next dimension because of government or medical systemic abuses, negligence and indeed laziness. And I'm one of the people that in my last surgery I actually told them put do not resus on because I was over it, over being in chronic agony and kind of was quite happy to die until ironically I died and realised when the spirit sent me back that I have no right to, sh to let anyone curtail my life. It's not for them to decide. It's for the gods. No one else, not even me, gets to choose, which is kind of ironic when you think about it. Now what's happened here? It's all gone funny. Oh, dear goddess. All right, we're back. So my response back then in 2016 was yes I would and I did my best to get my mother appropriate and regular pain relief and care until the palliative team finally stepped in and they only stepped in because I was having to fight the, the hospital staff literally chase them down the corridors to make sure they were giving my mother morphine to keep her comfortable and out of pain when I went home with absolute bloody exhaustion right because I had still had two teenagers at home when I would go home they were withholding pain relief from my mother and I knew that because when I would return to the hospital I'd look at the chart and see that they had withheld the pain relief it was absolutely evil what was going on and caused me a lot of distress because I couldn't leave my mother's side the minute I left, they'd withhold pain relief. So there was a lot of me chasing staff down, going, have you have you administered morphine to my mother today? Why is she in pain? So eventually they brought in the palliative team and agreed that they would install a, what's called a Grayson's pump into her, you know, somewhere around her chest. I can't remember exactly where it was now. Somewhere around here. And administer regular pain relief that way oh, but it was it was evil what went on the stress I was put under to make sure my mother my monster was kept comfortable so she could die with dignity because I'd always promised her and I'm always try to keep my promises that I would make sure she died you know she would have a dignified as pain-free as possible death which is Basic human right for everyone, isn't it? Really? The hospital made it very hard for me to keep my promise, by the way. Charlie, stop pooping on my computer. It's not working as it is. The new the new the new um keyboard that I bought 
but it's not working. Still, still throwing up windows when I try to navigate to a page. Took me forever to get this up, so I guess I have to go tab by using the tabs one by one, 22 pages in. That's why I freak out when it, the screen blips off. Anyway, where was I? Hardest three weeks of my life chasing nursing stuff down, staff down for morphine and being terrified to go home to rest as I knew from her charts that at the pain relief lapse when I was not around. The bastards. I kept my word to a mother who ironically never kept hers with me. Rather, hold my head high with honour, integrity and mentally kite than lay down in the gutter with those bastards. Would I do it again? Now that is one hell of a question. Still in 2016, lol, cuddles, but I look so old and tired, I look just like my mother. Oh bless, but here I am, looking old and tired, but having cuddles with my Beauregard. Such a good boy, wasn't he Charlie? Is he a good boy? Yes, and you was a good girl, very good girl. Drug free, dickhead free, carefree. Karma Chameleon can hold hands with the other ghouls. Wait for me. Just you wait. Heaven is a huge place. I will shine my light from another cosmic beam. Mummy, you are in not so good company. Ha ha ha. Like cures like. Because he used to collude that dead ex-lover with my own mother against me. That's how perverted and evil they all were. Really sick and evil it was, knowing that my mother was not really an ally, well, was actually an enemy to me most of my life. They colluded with it. They were all utterly demonic. It's the only way to describe them. From the comments section, don't worry, darlings, I am not angry anymore. You did your worst, and here I am, still standing, better than I ever did. For every glove you laid me down and cut me till I bled, only fucking made me more powerful. The fighter still remains. The cosmic joke is, love is eternal. Ha, ha, ha. It's a horrifying thought. I hope I never run in, into any of those evil bastards ever again for the rest of eternity. No, I don't hope. I pray. I hope I hope whoever runs this multiverse lets me get on, onto some other timeline or a different soul group because I'm done with monsters. I really am done with them. It's weirdly sweet that his car... K-A, car, Egyptian word for soul. Felt it was so important to bang down my door, then lead me to the discovery of his death via his son. Liking a comment on a public, a comment I wrote on a public page. What's the odds of that happening? Millions to one. Like the whole thing was bizarre. Absolutely bizarre people. I hear I write. What are the odds of that revelation? 20 million to one? I was going on the population of Australia. It's still, it's astonishing. It still blows my mind to this day. Hashem really wants me to get closure. Mm -hmm. Even from men who shat on me decades ago and whom I had almost forgotten. Men who were cruel and not worthy of my heart or time or attention. 
So fuck off spirit. Deal with your evil bullshit on the other side of your multifaceted face. You had an ugly heart and I had only barely survived you. Sad but true. Took quite some doing to survive them all. Perhaps the Ain Sof made you do a life review. But don't seek my forgiveness now. You were never sorry. And dead men can't tell lies. Ha ha ha. A Facebook friend, Julie Butler, wrote, Hope you're okay, Tanya. I write, yeah, just completely weirded out by how Hashem keeps me in the loop or running on the, the rat wheel, lol. What an incredible journey my life has brought me on. Sometimes I was treated like excess baggage, an old battered suitcase kicked from place to place. Other times I was a first class ticket on a road to nowhere, and even on rare occasions, I was the train conductor. Once or twice, I held myself in front of my own train, trying to prevent an even worse calamity, screeching the brakes to a grinding metal scraping halt. But that train keeps on going, never stops at any destination. For long, I have sat in my own economy cabin, holding on for dear life, or sleeping, or reading, or inviting friends to join me for buffet, a feast of fortitude and love, for decades. One day I will ride, sorry, one day I will find my, tra my train journey into the sky. Maybe I should have left it at I will ride my train journey into the sky. Sounded better the first time round. But until then, choo choo! Let's go, go, go! More steam in the furnace, more labours of love and truth, from humble beginnings and whistle stop cafes, beautiful destinations unfold like 3D paper sculptures. Time heals, reveals and seals our fate flawlessly, seamlessly, with grace and circumstance and trust. Ah, oh, yesterday was Bella Rosa Aarons' birthday. She would have been 10 years old. Now that was one of my truest loves. Miss my little new world leader. If I ever get a windfall, I will get her portrait as a tattoo. She was my little soulmate. Here's a photo. It, it just kind of looks a bit rude, but it's not. But... It's the cutest thing. I'm sitting on the grass and I'm wearing my long, you know, leopard print woolen uh, top, which, you know, is a mini dress kind of thing. But when I wear it out, I usually team it with a black skirt underneath because it, it just sort of looks a bit rude. You know, it's not too short, but just looks a bit rude. So this photo looks a bit rude, but that's not my intention. But it's of Beauregard looking at one of my little silky hens who's snuggling in, in, um, in my lap between my thigh on the grass. So um, here's, uh, here's Beauregard looking on. So cute. But I don't know, somehow it almost looks semi-erotic, that photo, but it wasn't my intention. It's just, you see, you can see my thigh and then there's this black fluffy thing <laughs> sitting there. But it's, um, 
it's uh, I think it's uh, whoop, I think that was Elvira. I can't remember all their names now. But she was the cutest little chook. Oh, it was Helga. Protecting Helga from Beauregard. That's why I had her tucked up in my lap so he couldn't get to her. Here's another photo of the bow. Looking very cute. <clears throat> Here's another one of him actually looking up at me. Sweet boy. Sometimes I think, oh, I should get another dog. And then I think I can't go through the trauma with dealing with vets anymore. And that horror was, that was just so horrific. But anyway. Ten twenty eight, uh, sorry, ten twenty one a.m. Awake after just over five hours sleep. The events and revelations by spiritual forces yesterday literally blew my mind. So I could not sleep until I finally passed out with exhaustion. I cancelled lunch with Melvin as I'm too tired to go trapsing to the city. Also, my flu symptoms are back. Sneezing again. I booked in with him for next Wednesday instead. I wonder what gifts, surprises, emotional settling today has in store. My life is, as always is curious and curiouser. Well, the big surprise was when I finally caught up with my cousin Melvin was um, he is trans has transitioned to being a woman at 72 years of age and so he is now a she and it is called now Melissa Rose so it was a bit of an ontological shock you know but I mean of course I love her and accept her for who she is she's my cousin but it was a bit of an ontological shock at the time because you know He'd been widowed for five years and obviously, you know, I knew him and his wife. We used to have lunch together and he's got three grown-up sons and then suddenly he says, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm becoming a woman. So it was, was indeed a big surprise. But um, love is love and my cousin is my cousin. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I'd still um, carry on with our you know, our relationship of being cousins and I would still meet her out for lunches until such time she moved to, um, when she moved. Actually, no, I'm wrong about that. She transitioned after moving to Cairns. But I did meet up with her when she came down with Cairns it October last year and uh, it was lovely, lovely to see her. And then I got another ontological shock because... Her son is also transitioning. <laughs> so, yeah, out of three sons, he now has two sons and a daughter. She now has, see, I'm still wrapping my head around it, two sons and a daughter now, trans, transgender w woman, you know, my cousin and her son. So it was um, quite astonishing. Here I write, natural attrition, long, happy, prosperous, loving lives at my expense, sigh, sighs. There is no justice for me, just a long, cold laugh like a banshee. Let their foul spirits scratch and bang at my door, dickhead free zone. I will never let them in, smiley face. I was obviously referring to my former lover who haunted my door and my former family who he had colluded with. So definitely a dickhead free zone at my house. That's why it's called sacred space. 
and um, I'm very careful who I invite, invite into my life as a consequence of their actions. What are you doing, Charlie? Come here. Come here. Come here. That's it. Good girl. I don't want you climbing in the kitchens. Because I'll have to bloody wash and iron them again. And I hate ironing. I don't mind washing, but ironing is a drag. Yes, a big drag, Charlie. 3.13 p um, three thirteen a.m. Not sleeping, not surprised. After my spiritually intense week, oi. I will be ratchet when I meet Melvin tomorrow. I guess I will try to sleep or just pull an all-nighter, then lunch, then nap in the afternoon. Beauregard is very active tonight too. Gnawing and playing with <coughs> bones under my bed. The sound of steps and the knock happened again around 2am. He barked from under my bed. I rebuke that spirit. Go in peace into the light. Nothing to see here. The love I gave died inside of me for a very long time. I now pour it into another man, another receptacle that can never be satiated, laughing my ass off. But I keep enough love for myself this time, enough to miraculously brew up a new batch from an infinitely supercharged source. Just when I think there is no love left for me to give, I am refilled, replete, reveled and revealed. God is great. I am loved by beings of light, immaculate love and ultimate truth. The comfort, joy and love for a human man that was stolen from me or strangled out of me time and again by the false love of the Davids, the sick, twisted perversions of their maelstromic calculations of narcissism and psychopathology, or psychopathy I wrote, their cacophonous, violent abuses and betrayals no longer affect me. Only the pure of heart and mind and soul may ever have access to my inner sanctum sanctuary. I am done with being fucked over by liars, cheats and soulless spectres. Bring me my one true lover, loyal, faithful, loving, supportive and true to me until the end of my sojourn on this travelling circus in the Milky Way. Otherwise, move along, nothing to see here. Only God and the angels can know whom is for my highest good. Yea, though I have walked in the shadow of the valley of death, I have feared no evil. For only the lonely, beaten and lost can see the world as it truly is and still whisper words of love and comfort to the wind, the sun, the moon, the trees, the sea, the animals and the birdies. Can yet be blessed with love and peace and joy in a world of deception and hate. The true alchemist turns lead to gold and shit to fragrant flowers and clay-footed golems to gods. King David, Adonis, ha ha, ha ha, bloody ha ha. What a malicious little wanker. But as usual, 
psychedelic dreamer, laughs last and laughs best. From a place of beauty, survival and wisdom, Adonai, that means my Lord. May the words on my lips and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you. Amen. Laughing out loud. It really hurts to see another of his former lovers, a woman of substance, that he damaged so much she was hospitalised in Tuwong Hospital, private clinic, which only the very wealthy can afford, by the way, for eight weeks, crawling after him and his family like he was some god. Really, he was just a filthy fucking animal. Also, that I used to turn to her for sympathy when he broke me down too. All the while she was feeding him back with my suffering, callow lowlifes, all of them. But I did not break quite so easily. He needed to use my own family of origin to attack me. Weaklings, all of them. All the while I was scapegoated as insane and worthless. As my lovely friend Lynn told me, I was never the insane one. I was merely the receptacle of all their hatred and inadequacies and spite. I rose above it. God raised me up and brought me through. Impossible, insurmountable barriers surrounded by enemies. Thank you, Adonai. I mattered, after all. My friend in America, whom I've never met, he's a Facebook friend, Michael Brecher, wrote, Hmm... Last week and this were also spiritually intense for me. I had a breakthrough in therapy where we discussed my roiling anger just below the surface and how I adopted my dad's misplaced suffering over the Holocaust, which is a common thing for second generation survivors to um, sometimes be more, more traumatised than the first generation survivors because we take on all that um, unresolved emotional burden. During the, the session, my therapist mentioned that I was highly sensitive, empathic and empathetic person, a highly sensitive, empathic and empathetic person, particularly to the pain and suffering of other sentient beings. For the first time it dawned on me whether or not this tendency of mine was formed under normal or pathological conditions. This or that is who I am and I need to take care of myself by censoring what I expose myself to was a very powerful aha moment for me indeed. And he is indeed a very empathic person. I replied, Empaths do suffer terribly up from storing others' emotions or energies. After reading about my life, take my advice and go and wash your hands to cleanse of my auric field. Never take on the emotions of others unless you are in a strong healing space. It's good practice to wash after dealing with someone who is struggling or suffering emotionally and or mentally. Um, it's, it's not good to take on the en energetic um, kind of um, attachments from others. Wash. 
and better yet wash in salt water if you have to if it's really bad as to the holocaust we all carry generational trauma which is not actually ours but is gifted to us in the dna add to that our own ptsd and it becomes a heavy load anywho lila tov i'm a schluff now i only had four hours sleep this morning Mind took a bit of a hammering, so time to rest. 12.48 a.m. Time to sleep. I'm having lunch with my cousin Melvin tomorrow. Which, yeah, that didn't happen, but we met up in, uh, at another time, I think. But anyway, it's very kind of my cousin Melvin to keep in contact with me since I have no other family. None. Especially now my daughters have both gone. Well, they're not gone, is and they're not dead, but you know what I mean. Just estranged and gone weird since the... Which was, uh, you know, just one of the factors in contributing to their weirdness. 9th of June 2015. I was so very wrong. Also a naive child bride in the hands of a dull intellect sociopath. Are you pulling feathers? He and mummy dearest had me doubting my worth, my sanity and my personhood in no time at all. Both evil bastards. 7.14 a.m. Time to sleep. I got to talk to Crystal this morning. 9th of June. Ah, oh, jeez, Charlie, that's gross. She climbed up on my laptop to do the poopykins. But she could have just done on my bench. Like, what? What, Charlie? Oh, well. She likes to shit from a greater height, clearly. <whistles> Hello. 9th of June, 2014. Oh my God, awesome weekend. Life is awesome. Somebody stopped me going out again with Joe, usual suspects. Please don't ever quit or stop me. I am loving it. Without a dollar to my name, but sharing what I did has meant the universe paid it forward in abundance, feeling valued and adored. Oh, bless Tanya. That's lovely. See, it's not all misery and negativity and trauma. Sometimes lovely things used to happen for me too and still do happen for me just got to look on the bright side of life don't you yes you do you have to make every day beautiful no matter what 9th of june 2011 come here get off my get off my laptop just rugged up and took miss bella rosa for a walk she's been growling every time i patted her I think she was a bit jealous that Tristan, who was my ginger cat, came back. It was freezing in the outside world and my chest is aching even more now, but it was good to get lots of fresh, brisk air. Bella is much saner too. She had the doggy version of cabin fever. This is all twisted. Not good. Well, anyway, we want to go out like a blister in the sun and be violent thumbs. Interesting news. My ginger Tom, who had packed up his hairy balls two weeks ago, came home today. I was pleased to see him as I thought he'd been catnapped by the evil Nazi Brisbane City Council. But no, my little lad is home, well-fed, bright and bushy-tailed. 
The little fucker must have been mooching elsewhere. At least he didn't bring home the vixen and the kits. Laughing my ass off. Zulu came back after four years, although Zulu was desexed when he ran away. I guess in the cat world amongst males, I'm a keeper because they all come back eventually. <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to laugh. Wish one of my favourite men would work this out for himself, lol, but by the time he drags his puppy dog tail behind him, this little minx will have moved on indeed. Meow, smiling like the cat that got the cream. I'm saving all my loving for a man who loves me back just as much as I love him. And there will be no sexual relations unless I'm absolutely positively certain that that man loves me. There'll be no wasting my rather formidable sexual energies on lacklustre false lover men ever again. Dishes done, a whole bath full, two loads of washing and a few more to go, trying to get order in my life. I cleaned out the old <coughs> toy box going to have to put myself on back on mulling tea. I'm all congested again. I cleaned out the old toy box and threw out old magazines. Still trying to declutter my life. Slowly, slowly, seeing progress, Charlie. She's cute when she decides she wants cuddles. It was random, Charlie. Very random. Do you want a kissy, kissy? I love you. Well, I do. Oh, you want a scratch? She says, I love you too, Mama. Just give me a scratchy. Yes, I know. Okay, but no biting. Biting is not nice. Biting hurts, Mama. If you bite me, I'll have to bite you back. And that would not be nice. Because you're smaller than me. And I've got bigger teeth. Oh, the better to bite you with. See how I talk to her and she just laughs at me. She's just staring at me. Are you some kind of idiot, Mama T? Yes, I am, Charlie. Yup, sore throat gone to chest, now coughing and mucusy in my schnoz. Schnoz means nose. Don't you love how I share? This time it's partially... Self-inflicted as I spent way too much time in the garden, in the cold, with bare feet. <clears throat> I'm earthed, but I'm also risking death. Laughing out loud. I can't get any more earthed than that, I guess. It's true, isn't it, Charlie? Don't worry, I will survive. Had a few happy days, and I want more. More happy days, Charlie. Many, many more happy, happy days. 9th of June 2010. Living quietly and waiting for Godot. Godot who never arrives. I don't think I should wait for Godot anymore. I should wait for one who's guaranteed to turn up. Am I right? Who would that be? Not the Messiah. He never turns up either. Anyway, he's not the Messiah. He's just a very naughty boy. So, thus concludes today's readings of Even Date. It's still a beautiful afternoon, but it's now 3.42 p.m., the sun is still shining, but the damp is coming down. How do I know? I can feel it in my lungs. I haven't even opened the window and let the dampness in, but I'm like a weather vane, people. 
it says the temperature is 23 degrees which I don't quite believe but it might be accurate and um, yeah wherever you are in the space-time continuum have a good afternoon evening morning noon night <coughs> choose to be happy no matter what and remember when the spectres of ex-lovers come banging on your door to never ever ever let the bastards grind you down am i right i'm right charlie thinks i'm right too but that was before charlie came into my life wasn't it charlie Is you a pretty girl? Is you pretty? Is you a pretty girl? All right. Goodbye for now from Titania's realm at Sacred Space. And um, sending you big agape love out to the ether and planet Earth and whoever, whoever needs it. Not so that I get drained of my own life essence and core like I used to give out way too much love to really, really awful evil people who did not value it. So the agape love I'm giving to you is from the infinite source, not from me because I'll get drained people and uh, have no desire to be a living zombie anymore be drained of life force for people who weren't worth the scrap under my fingernails. Though they're not too bad. They're always in a persistent state of brokenness, but they're not too grotty at the moment. And um, <clears throat> on that note, bye for now. Talk to you tomorrow, no doubt. <laughs>